Patrick Doherty, 31. Gerald Donaghy, 17. Jackie uh, Duddy, 17. Hugh Gilmore, 17. Michael Kelly, 17. Michael McDade, 20. Kevin McElhenney, 17. Barney McGuigan, 41. Gerard McKinney, 35. William McKinney, 26. William Nash, 19. Jim Ray, 22. John Young, 17. And John Johnston, 59. These are the names of the boys and men who were murdered by the British military on the streets of Derry 50 years ago. The murders of these peaceful civil rights campaigners changed the course of history uh, forever. And when a government murders its own citizens who are marching for equality in broad daylight, it becomes clear that the state itself is the very problem. And I too we're proud to join with the other political parties in laying wreaths in Derry on Saturday to remember these boys and men. And it still surprises me, maybe it shouldn't, but the emotion of what happened uh, 50 years ago still catches you with the same intensity uh, every single time you attend a commemoration in Derry. And Irish nationalists were discriminated against by the British state in terms of housing, jobs and civil rights. And when they campaigned in the streets, they were murdered by the, the, the British state. When they sought to politically, peacefully change the situation, they were also murdered by the British state or censored or banned uh, from the media. And, you know, Bloody Sunday wasn't an isolated incident. In, 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 indeed, it followed the Bally Murphy massacre, which happened in the previous August, where the same regiment of uh, the British Army murdered 10 unarmed citizens. Father Hugh Mullen, 38, Francis Quinn, 19, Daniel Taggart, 44, Joan Connolly, 44, Noel Phillips, 19, Joseph Murphy, 41, John Laverty, 20, Joseph Corr, 43, Edward Doherty, 31, and John McCurr, 49, all murdered by the British state in Ireland. And Joan Connolly was a 44-year-old mother of eight. Joan was shot when she went to the aid of a young boy, Noel Phillips, who, Phillips, who himself was shot and wounded by the British uh, soldiers. Joan was shot several times in the head and in the body. And her injuries were so severe that part of her face was blown off. Joan bled to death because the British Army prevented emergency medical attention getting to her, even though she cried out for hours. Joan's injuries were so horrific that her family struggled to identify her body, and they only finally did that on the third attempt due to the fact that Joan had red hair. And I'm also phenomenally shocked that so few people in the south of Ireland know Joan's name. And if we're honest with ourselves, one of the reasons why her name is not widely known in this jurisdiction is because there it has been very little political capital in her death. Her name is not thrown over back and forth in this chamber or on radio stations coming up to elections. Unfortunately, she is not known because of her political value. It's a shocking situation. In July uh, 72, five Catholics were murdered in the Spring Hill Estate in West Belfast, again by the British Army. And after these murders took place, the British started to take international heat, international attention and condemnation. So they changed strategy very, very clearly, and they moved their murders to undercover murders in collusion with loyalist paramilitaries. And the Glenan gang went on to murder 120 people in a very small triangle uh, between Armagh and Tyrone. Um, the, the father of the deputy leader of AIN2, uh, Denise Mullen, who's a councillor in Dungannon, was murdered in front of her when she was four years of age. They went after her mother in that house and they shot a number of times at her and she fled against out in the fields, leaving her own daughter in the house. And her daughter had to remain there without any help from the emergency services for a number of hours because the emergency services were worried that the house was booby-trapped. Um, it's an incredible situation. On Saturday, I took part in a programme with the Ancient Order of Hibernians in which we discussed the Operation Greenwich. And that report is incredible. It details the murder of Jared Casey from Risharkin, the murder of Eddie Fullerton in Boncrana, the murder of Patrick Shanahan in Castle Derg Tyrone, of Thomas Donaghy of Kilray Derry, of Bernard O'Hagan from uh, in Matter of Felt, the attempted murder of James McCorriston in Kilrain, the murder of Daniel Cassidy in Kil uh, Kilray uh, County Derry, the attempted murder of Patrick McCarleen in Dunloy County Antrim, the murder of Malachy Carey of Ballymoney, and the murders of Robert uh, Dalrymple, James Kelly, James McKenna, and Noel O'Kane at Castle Rock 
County Derry. It also discusses the murders of John Burns, Moira, Joseph McDermott, James Moore, John Moyne, Stephen Mullen and Karen Thompson in the Rising Sun Bar in Greysteel, County Derry. The eighth victim, Samuel Montgomery, died as a result of his injuries. Now, all of these were fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters, and most of them, many of them, would be alive today in Ireland if it wasn't the actions of the British state. Some people feel that this is history, but I can tell you most of these families are living with this every day, either through the post-traumatic stress that they're experiencing, or actually by seeing the perpetrators of those murders living in the same communities as them. In the case of Denise Mullen, she received last year a death threat from the man who murdered her father, and she's been driving around for a year looking in her rear view mirrors, in her side view mirrors, to see is there someone following her. I attended the 50th anniversary of the Bally Murphy massacre in August, and one of the sentences that was repeated over and over again from the stage, from the relatives who were speaking, was, very simply, the British are trying to get away with murder. It's kind of a sentence that we hear so much in our lives, but the gravity of that sentence is quite shocking when you see that that is the actual effect uh, that the British are trying to achieve here. And, and remember that with regards to the murders of, of, of Irish people in, uh, in Ireland by British soldiers, these were the actions of a rogue state. The fact that there were no proper investigations, that evidence was destroyed, that there were little or no convictions, that there was no accountability, these were the actions of a rogue state. In many occasions, Minister, the people who carried out these murders actually got promotions, actually achieved improved careers as a result of that from the British state. And if we're really honest, this state, the southern state, in many occasions stood idly by when those murders happened. Um, I, I often think of the Dublin Monaghan bombings and the lacklustre investigation that happened by the southern state at the time in relation to finding the perpetrators of the Dublin and, and Monaghan bombings. And even today, in this chamber, much of what has happened is met with what about really? Absolutely every single family that had a loved one murdered by whichever side over the last 50 years needs to find justice and truth and needs to have accountability. But when we see the whataboutery happening as we have done in this chamber today, it shows you that political capital is still alive and well when it comes to this particular debate. The British amnesty that is sought are the, is the actions of a rogue state. And it is absolutely important that we as a, 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 a political group here, and as a government, increase the urgency, increase the efforts with regarding holding the British states to account with regards to this. The British signed the Good Friday Agreement. They signed the Stormont House Agreement. These are international treaties, international agreements that they've signed. They have a responsibility under international law to adhere to those treaties and agreements. And we, are not doing enough work, Minister, I believe, wholeheartedly in pursuing the government, the British government, in making sure they uphold those treaties. And I ask the Minister, in the name of all of those people's names that I have read out today, that we redouble our efforts to hold the perpetrators of those, that, those violent crimes to account. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.